Hello everyone, this is Angela here, and tonight I want to talk about um, dating and relationships and how to spot a potential user slash gold digger. And user slash gold digging diggers come in both male and female, but in this particular video, I'm going to talk about the uh, male version of a gold digger slash user who is just looking for someone to pay their way. They're usually narcissistic. They happen to be very good looking and they, a lot of them are somatic narcissists. Um, I may have touched on this subject before, but I've got some new information that I just discovered where I spotted a potential gold digger who uh, I had, who I was talking to online. Um, I was talking to this individual online, and he seemed really cool. And then we took it and exchanged numbers, and we started talking over the phone. And this individual seemed very charming, very nice, you know, he, but there was a few red flags. The first red flag was he seemed to be really into me. And I thought that was kind of odd for somebody to be really into me when he hadn't even met me. Like, he offered to take me out to dinner, and I'm just like, well, we didn't meet yet, I said to him. Um, maybe we should just keep it light and just meet each other for a, a coffee or a drink or something. And then, you know, um, this way there's no commitment of a dinner and we could just chit chat for a little bit and see where it goes. And he was not cool with that. He was saying, oh, I'll come and pick you up at my house. First of all, nobody's picking me up in my house that I've never met before. Okay. That's just not happening. And I'll take you to dinner like a lady. I'm like, no, I'd rather meet someplace. And basically, um, with online dating in general, there's certain rules that I make. Like I will not, will not date anyone who's out of the radius like who's not within a 10 mile to at the most 20 mile radius from where i live and 20 miles is really stretching it so that kind of pushed out a lot of people but it also protected me from being scammed because there's not the excuse well we can't meet because i live far away no no not happening so anyway getting back to the subject matter on hand this person was asking me a lot of questions that seemed innocuous at first, but then when I started to catch on, I started thinking this guy could be a potential gold digger. And, you know, then those old cliches of uh, what kind of car do you drive? Um, people are kind of hip to that. So a gold digger is not going to come out and ask you, what kind of car do you drive? Because people have gotten pretty pretty smart in recognizing that as a gold digger's tactic. So they changed up their tactics. And this is what they do. Don't, don't want to know a lot of information about what type of person you are. They're extremely attracted to professionals, okay? People that are in middle to upper middle class, which I consider myself with regard to my income on the medium scale. I'm not upper class, but I'm not in poverty either, you know, but I've worked hard for what I had, you know, um, and I'm not going to allow somebody to come in and take advantage of me. And you shouldn't either. Whether you're a man or a female, it doesn't matter. But the one tactic that they use is they want to know, um, they want they they want to know how you travel. Okay, like that was the one thing he wanted to know how I travel, and I said that I take a bus or to the train, or sometimes I drive to the train. Okay. Um, I didn't volunteer to tell him what type of car did I drive, but 
he was trying to get me to divulge that information by dancing around the issue about how I get to work. He wanted to know, first of all, whether or not I had a car. So he was subtly trying to get into that. The next thing that he did was he started asking me about where I shop. Now, if you're a person on a higher income level, you're going to shop at stores like Newman Marcus, um, Boyd's is a very high-end store. Well, actually, it's a male store, but it's still high-end. Um, Macy's, not so much. Bloomingdale's, yeah, it's pretty high-end. They're not going to be... If you say that you're interested in shopping, like I told him I shop at ShopRite, sometimes I shop at Walmart, you know, I'm, I'm not into high-end stores, you know, because to, it's just not my thing. Um, my, my favorite department store, actually, you know, if anybody wants to know, is Boscov's because it's not low-end like Walmart. Okay, not that there's anything wrong with Walmart. A lot of great stuff in there. I shop there a lot, but I do my food shop, a lot of my food shop in there. But Boscov's is, is pretty good. They have nice things. They have, you know, but they're not high-end, not like Newman Marcus, not like, you know. And then there's high-end grocery stores like Wegmans is one of them. Um, you know, people that are frugal don't shop at Wegmans, okay, they don't do their food shopping there, they'll shop at ShopRite, they'll shop at Walmart, they'll shop Target, you know, different place where average people work, and I'm average, you know, I can hold my own, I'm not, you know, in dire straits, but I'm not out there, I don't, I don't make the income that my boss makes, okay, and I'm perfectly fine with that, you know, um, I'm happy with my life, but these, but these are the tactics that gold diggers use to find out whether or not you're a good prospect for them, okay? Um, for the ladies, I understand that we all, you know, all our single ladies who want relationships want a relationship, but you have to be able to hold your own. Okay, if you don't really have your life together, like you're behind on your bills and you don't have, you, you're not able to hold your own because for whatever reason, it could be because you lost your job and you're not, you know, established in your life. You're still getting yourself together for whatever reason. A man's not going to be attracted to that. Okay, and if you start snooping around, asking him all kinds of questions about where he likes to shop and th this and that and the other, you know, that could be a red flag of a gold digger. And men, okay, I don't care how beautiful you think a woman is, okay, if that woman is only using you to pay, your, pay her bills, especially if you're not on her level, okay, if she's... If all she has going for her is looks and she just wants somebody who she doesn't care what you look like, okay? But you got the green in your wallet to pay her way, okay? Don't expect that woman to love you for who you are. She's only loving you for what you got in your wallet. And it's the same thing for a woman. Um, with women, with guys... I, my ex, okay, my ex who had all the symptoms of a somatic narcissist, whether he was, he wasn't diagnosed, I'm not a doctor, okay, but he had all the characteristic traits of a somatic narcissist. When I met him, um, I was very smitten by him, okay, he was Italian, he was good looking, he, you know, and, you know, we were a cute couple, okay? We were at the time, we were a cute couple with regards to how we complimented each other's looks. Okay? Um but he didn't have anything going for him. He I felt like I was more like his provider, you know what I'm saying? And it's like 
I, you know, we had got when we had gotten together, I was trying to encourage him to get his life together. He didn't have his life together. I was the one encouraging him, and I was the one who put out money to try to help him. Never ever do that. Okay? Never ever put out money to try to help somebody that doesn't have their life together. Because I'm telling you, you're setting yourself up to get robbed. And I'm not just kidding. Okay? My mom also used those tactics on men. My mom could charm any guy. Like, she she knew how to empty a man's wallet. She had that gift. Okay? She was very charismatic. Um, those who saw reunion with narcissistic mother, you see how she was game on that old man that walked into the room. Oh, hello, sir. How are you? For those who never saw that movie, go check that video series. Go check that out. People, I get so much flack on reunion with narcissistic mother. They saw her as this sweet old lady. Pugh. They have no idea. They have no idea. She could rip your heart out and throw it against the wall quickest. It's quick, quicker than you could spit on the floor. I'm dead serious. It's just who she was. These people don't have any empathy. They're opportunistic. They are all about themselves. And they're all about how to get everything they can get out of you. And <laughs> many of them, for many of them, that's your wallet. And once they're done with their paras parasitic tactics on you and draining you emotionally, financially, physically... Then they just move on as if you never even existed. That's what happened with the Italian. It's like, you know, he knew that game was over because I wasn't, I, I wasn't going to put out any more money. I didn't lose. I didn't lose an enormous amount of money, but, you know, I lost time. I got two thirds of my money back from him, you know, um, but not because he wanted to give it back to me, but because I demanded it back. You know, I had a cut a loss of a thousand dollars. So yeah, I I, I lost a thousand dollars out of that relationship. But I had we were living together, and I had to loan him that money because he needed a car to go to work. And if I didn't loan it to him, that he wouldn't have a job, and he wouldn't be providing. So it was a lose lose situation for me. My lesson in that relationship was never, ever be with somebody who doesn't have stable income, like a stable job, and paying their bills and holding them on. You got to hold your own. The other person has to hold their own, I meant to say. So I'm going to say it again. You have to hold your own, and he has to hold his own. And you have to have each other's back in a relationship, okay? If one person is is giving, 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 and the other person is just taking, taking, taking. Well, then that's what you're left with. So watch out for the gold diggers. They'll ask you questions to find out information, and they can very easily tell, okay, what type of lifestyle you live by where you shop and, you know, about how you travel, you know, um, they want to know if you're taking buses or trains or driving or carpooling or whatever it is that you're doing because that's how they find out. So if you hear these things, there could be red flags, okay? It's not deal breakers. That may not be the case, but be on, be on alert when people start asking you questions about where you shop and how you travel and what kind of car you drive and how, like, like asking questions about designer things and different things like that. Even if it's like, oh, I love, I bought this um, Chanel bag or whatever. I just love Chanel, blah, blah, blah. When they start talking game like that, mm -mm, no. So that's all I got to say for this one. Um, I hope everybody's safe. I hope everybody's happy and have a great night. Take care.